Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, it's Andy from Big Mac's Workshop Paint Studio and it's a Viper jet bike today. So I'm doing this for the studio, uh, which is why I'm starting off with the airbrush. But that's only just for the canopy and the, um, the actual bulk of the um, bulk of the vehicle itself. So I've so got a base coat of deep red and I'm going over the top with Ontario's red just to uh, start blending in some highlights, getting really cool transitions in, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but the majority of the work is going to be done by brush, so you can actually have a, a good look of what's going on in there. So now I've got um, a layer of Elder Baron Red. I do apologise for the, uh, the lack of footage on the airbrush work. I was having a bit of trouble with it and I couldn't actually get a decent focus on the um, on the model for this particular stage. But the Elder Baron Red is going on and we're leaving some of the darker reds um, showing. And you're going to get a really cool transition. And uh, once we've got these uh, colours in, we're going to have a really good look at uh, what's going on by doing it by hand now. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going back over with the Elder Baron Red, some of the Atari's Red, just to blend in the colours a little bit. Just make sure those uh, transitions are smooth. As I said, uh, was, uh, the uh, airbrush was misbehaving a little bit, so uh, I was uh, struggling a little bit. Um, even though it had been thoroughly cleaned, sometimes these things happen and uh, the airbrush decides it's not going to play. But I'm just getting all these uh, transitions smoothed out now just to make sure everything looks right. Really focusing on the uh, high points, making sure that those uh, nice orangey reds are really showing through. So now, by hand, uh, starting to do some edge highlights on the um, on the uh, canopy and that. So this is Mars Orange by Scale 75. The uh, majority of the paints in this uh, tutorial are Scale 75, but there's a lot of very similar uh, colours from uh, Games Workshop. For those of you who don't have access to Scale 75s, as you can see, I'm using the side of, side of a brush where possible. It just makes life a lot easier, and using a nice bright orange just to get those uh, extreme edge highlights really vibrant. So now I'm uh, picking uh, the corners now, and this is Peanut Butter by Scale 75. There's something on the lines of um, a. Uh, dusty yellow uh, so maybe uh, Zandri dust would work uh, from uh, GW but it's uh, just focusing on the um, the uh, edges where um, two lines combine and using a really thin brush, this is a double zero uh, blending those uh, earlier edge highlights from the um, the orange um, just softening those uh, like yellow up a little bit and just bringing those uh, uh, points out nicely. So now I'm going to start on the uh, the gems, which there are a lot of. This is a, pro a typical LO vehicle, so it's got gems all over the place. And this is Rift Green. Now this is probably um, a similar sort of colour to what you'd expect from Dark Angels Green or Caliban Green, as it is now, I believe. Um, and it's just getting a nice uh, smooth coat over all the gems because uh, we're going to do some work on the gems and get them looking really cool. So now I'm uh, focusing from about two thirds of the uh, way uh, towards a what would be the bottom of a gem. So I'm painting these as if it's, uh, the, it's driving into the sun. And this is Irati Green, uh, with a kind of vibrant green. You could use Warboss Green for this I suppose. Um, any colour like that. You just want something nice and bright uh, to go over. Um, and you want to use a sort of a curved um, shape uh, as if the, uh, the sunlight is uh, hitting from an interesting angle. So as you, as you can see I've uh, positioned it all from the same sort of direction just to make um, make it look like it's actually flying in one, one direction. I'm also doing the same thing on the um, screen but you'll uh, see what, where I'm going with the screen later. So after the uh, Irati Green it is now uh, Goblin Flesh um, which is uh, quite a vibrant yellowy green and that's going down from about a third uh, the last third of the um, of the gems uh, making where, where, the, where the, um, the sun will be showing through um, I've, I've put a BL tan wash on and as you can see I'm using a, a dot of uh, white right where the um, sun would hit and then there's a line uh, coming through from the other hand where the uh, light would be diffusing from the bottom of the uh, bottom of the gem. So once it's uh, had the BL tan green and everything, we're going back. Up, uh, it, it's just about done, and look, and they will uh, look really nice from that. So I'm uh, doing a bit of um, blacking out now, um, going through any other details what aren't going to be the red because uh, this is going to be a Siam Han 
um, themed Eldar army for the studio, uh, which we're hoping to get um, be able to uh, get some uh, battle reports and some more tutorials out for you guys as well. Jet onto the buttons. Now I did actually save some buttons um, available to uh, do a different call, but I decided against uh, against that. But this is using Tesla blue, which is a nice vibrant blue. It really stands out nicely against the uh, reds and the greens on the um, screens and the gems. So back onto the screen, and I'm using Irati Green again. Uh, same, so it's basically the same colours as what I used on the uh, gems, and I'm just uh, adding some sort of scanner uh, colours in there. So this is really thin. I'm bringing out some really uh, thin thin lines, and building that colour up um, gently uh, with it uh, amongst itself. And once I've got some um, actual uh, good lines in there, I'm uh, just highlighting them put, uh, a little bit with the uh, Goblin Flesh, uh, just to really bring them out. And you're going to get kind of like what something looks a bit like a scanner. Um, you can, if you use uh, different thicknesses and different uh, consistencies on the on the uh, on, on, on it, then you will get a, a nice sort of uh, in and out sort of fading sort of scanner lines. So that's using the uh, goblin flesh now, just for the final sort of highlight, uh, just to uh, bring everything up together, and you get a you get a really cool effect. And it's dead simple. It just takes a takes a little bit of time because you need to be a, you need it to look fairly neat, but it's really simple and it's kind of effective. So back onto the buttons, as you can see, I've painted them all blue now. Uh, this is Gerildon Turquoise. I'm doing much the same thing with the uh, buttons as I did with the gems, only from starting from the top rather than the bottom. Um, so they are buttons rather than um, clear gems. So now I've added a little bit of white into the uh, turquoise, and I'm just adding. So onto the leather work. Uh, I've got a little bit over uh, over indulgent on the leather, uh, even though you can barely see it. I uh, went a little bit over the top and got a, a real, um, really got into it. So I'm using black leather uh, by Scale 75, and uh, it's kind of a purpley um, purpley uh, brown. I'm just uh, building up a, a bit of layer, a bit of a layer on there, and getting a nice coat across all the seats and all the um, holsters, um, using the same um, techniques across the, all of the leather work. So once it's dried, I've added some brown leather into it, and I'm just starting to uh, blend some of those uh, colours together. Um, nice big uh, highlights, because there's going to be a lot of um, colour changes in this, so you've got a lot, of, a lot of time to work with. I'm just pulling these uh, colours together because it's really just subtly changes the tone, adding the brown leather into it. So once the brown leather's gone down, it's adding some orange leather into it, and that's uh, going to start picking out the highlights and going to uh, add some real um, brightness to the uh, to all the edges on the um, on any of the leather work. You're going to get a really nice, strong, vibrant highlights. Now, if I was thinking straight, I'd probably have uh, ended it here uh, because most of the leather work you can't actually see. Uh, but as you can, as I uh, said, I've got a little bit uh, overindulgent on the leather work, and I'm really starting to enjoy myself. So I'm adding some more orange leather in, and I'm uh, just focusing more on the highlights now, right on the top leading edges, anywhere where the um, light would uh, have a chance to reflect off it, uh, off any other points. I'm just stretching some of the colours into the darker recesses as well, uh, really bringing them colours together to make uh, blending those uh, dark and light colours together nicely. Now I've added um, orange leather and Iroko into this mix. It's around about 50-50. Uh, I'm just starting to add some real striking highlights and a little bit of uh, detail work, uh, throwing some flaws where the uh, 
where the level will be used, uh, maybe a little bit of damage, and just uh, that makes the thing look a little bit more interesting, just uh, adding some nice uh, feathered highlights to the extreme edges. And now I'm going back with black leather. Uh, this is uh, just going into where all the uh, recesses are and along the uh, next to the um, any of the little extra lines I've placed in. Just add a little bit of depth in there. It just breaks up the uh, real vibrant highlights, and um, you can. Uh, this just uh, just brings it all together again. Now you can go an extra layer up at this point and uh, just start bringing those colours together by adding a bit of orange leather. Um, into the uh, highlights and just brings it all together so it makes it less stark. So now it is lead belcher, uh, nice GW paint for the um, for any of the silver work, any of the metals. Uh, added um, just straight on there. Obviously thin down a little bit. Uh, you want a good a good coverage, but you don't need a, uh, Obviously you don't want to be obscuring any details. So after a couple of layers of uh, the lead belcher, um, thin down some non oil, getting it all over the, any of the metal work, um, even the belt buckles, everything like that. Really making sure that these metals get the uh, quality of uh, coverage that you want. So, on to the uh, weapon systems now. Uh, this is uh, Scale 75's Black Earth Brown. Um, so, I'm going for a kind of a bone colour weapon. It makes it look a little bit more interesting breaks up again uh, against the reds as well. As you can see I'm using really thin paint here, uh, a little bit too thin to be fair, but it takes a hell of a lot longer than I intended it to. So after getting a good coverage of a black earth brown I'm using desert yellow now and um, this is just going straight over, uh, thin down as always but I'm just bringing up um, some of that um, darker brown to a sort of a yellow colour so we can get a nice bone from there. After the uh, desert yellow has gone down, I've added some Iroko, which is a kind of a yellowy cream. I'm bringing those uh, extreme points up to a, a nice, sort of almost bone colour, uh, just to uh, make the uh, weapons look a bit more natural. So I'm adding some more Iroko, uh, just to uh, really highlight those um, that bone aspect to the weaponry. It breaks up nicely against the reds as well, so you get a really nice. Uh, contrasting colour um, from the uh, weapon systems to the uh, vehicle. After that it is pretty much pure Roco. This is going to be used as an edge highlight mostly. Um, still using, uh, I'm allowing quite a lot of the um, Roco to go over the top. Uh, I want uh, it to be quite vibrant as uh, once we've got the Iroko down we're going to just tie it all together with a nice um, strong tone wash um, which is going to be thinned down, it's going to take a couple of layers and once it's um, once it's gone down it's going to start to bring out those uh, bone colours and you get a nice um, uh, colour shift between the uh, darker yellows and the, uh, bone, and the bony white Anyway guys, thank you for watching this. Very short video this time round. Um, some of which is due to uh, camera issues and it was just a generally short video anyway. So it was really easy to paint this. Uh, it only took a couple of days, uh, even whilst recording. So thank you for guys for watching. Obviously got some uh, thank yous to um, give out. Huge thank yous to our patrons, which are the Orc Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, D. Watt, Mark and Dave. So you're our top paying patrons, so massive thank yous to you guys for uh, help, uh, helping us out and. Uh, uh, really, your support is really, really uh, valuable. We couldn't do this without you guys. Also, thank you to the Outpost, which are our affiliate link. If you check the link, uh, if you use the link in the description, um, every time you uh, make a purchase through uh, the Outpost, you will get uh, um, your normal uh, reduced rates for using uh, for any uh, local gaming store. And also, we get five percent store credit for you using our affiliate link at no cost to you. So, huge thank you to them as well. So thank you for watching guys, uh, feel free to comment if you've got anything uh, you want to, uh, want to talk to us about. Uh, we do read every message and we try to uh, reply to any, any we can. So thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. So, uh.